Hi everyone, I'm Catherine from the Ridgefield Historical Society. In this week's episode of Change Agents, Ridgefield Women to be Remembered, Dr. Darla Shaw will portray Cora Ware, the youngest daughter of Impressionist painter, Jay Alden Ware. Cora, her two sisters, and Doris Andrews worked for 20 years to preserve Ware Farm and turned it into Connecticut's first national historical site. Hi, Darla. Hi, Catherine. I am so glad to be back again and to talk about these amazing women. And my sisters and myself, I have to applaud myself. We worked for 20 years to save Weir Farm from the housing developers and make it the most pristine, wonderful, sensuous historical park around. But before I talk about my sisters and myself, I'd really like to tell you about my family. My father, J. Alden Weir, was a very well-known Impressionist painter. Sometimes he painted in other modes, but he was also known for the group of 10. He led artist groups. He was a radical. He changed the art world. Well, he came from a very astounding art family background. His father was an art teacher for 40 years at West he taught drawing. His brother was the first Dean of Five Arts at Yale University, and he was a wonderful artist as well. Now, my mother was an art student of my father's when she was 18. She married him at age 19, and so sadly, at age 26, she passed away when I was born. Several years later, my father married my aunt and she became my stepmother, but we were always very fond of her. There was no problem. Well, we were an art family and my father also had an art family of people that he always invited for discussions and to paint with them. And he was looking for a retreat, a special place. At first he was gonna go to Keene Valley in New York, but that was hours away to travel. So then his friend said to him very ironically, you know, Alden, I have a deal for you. There's a painting of yours that I want. If you give me that painting, it wasn't one of my father's paintings, but one he owned, and $10, I will give you 157 acres, Branchville on the border of Wilton and Ridgefield in Connecticut. My father came, he saw the land, there were deep forests, there were fields, there was a working farm, there were wonderful barns and buildings to paint, there was a pond, there were stone walls, there were bushes and trees of all types. My father was sold. During the summer and on weekends, we would come and we would spend marvelous times at Weir Farm, just family, and with all these wonderful artists, it was an art colony right from the beginning. Well, when my father passed and my stepmother passed, the land was left to the three of us girls. And I want to tell you about my sisters and myself and why this land was so special and we had to preserve it. It was in our blood. My sister Caroline, we called her Cara, was the oldest. And she was, of course, an artist as well. But her passion was bookbinding. Now, you wouldn't think bookbinding is any big deal, but it was. Hers were one of a kind. 
They were artistic genius book bindings. They were historic. They were so unique. People wanted her book bindings. She also put out a limited collection of my father's work, and she also helped to catalog his hundreds of paintings. Now, my sister Dorothy, oh, she was so talented in so many ways. Um, she took art lessons from my father. She also studied with so many other artists. She was part of the New York Art Guild. What she also did was come across with 400 acknowledged paintings. And these paintings were of landscapes. They were portrait painting. They were of flowers. They were mostly housed in Salt Lake City at Brigham Young Museum. Now you would say, why are her paintings out in Utah? Well, she married Mahan Roy Young. And he was the son of Brigham Young. He was an artist, he was a wonderful sculptor. And his most important sculpture was of a farmer. And it was called, This is the Moment. And he used the farm boys on Weir Farm to model for this famous work of art. His studio can still be toured along with my father's on Weir Farm. Well, Dorothy was not only an artist. Dorothy was also a researcher and a writer. Oh, she wrote so beautifully. And she wrote the book, J. Alden Weir, Times and Life. It is such a well-accomplished book. And it is still in use today. But there's something else about Dorothy that we all love. She was a farm girl not only a degree in art, but a degree from Yukon in agriculture. She supervised everything on our working farm. You could see her riding tractors. You could see her milking cows. She was behind the plow. She was pluning the trees. She was working in all of the gardens. Down and dirty, that's what we called her, down and dirty Dorothy. She loved the land and getting her hands in the dirt. She loved the land so much she could not see anything happen to it. And then there's myself, Cora the youngest. And I used to say I'm the only one in the family who isn't an artist. But people said, Cora, yes, you are an artist. You're a landscape artist. And I was. I had a degree from Pratt Institute, but I also had degrees. I took classes. I taught. I did exhibits for the New York Botanical Garden. Oh, did I love gardens. Now I took, which is now the Visitor Center, and it's called the Burlingham House, my last name when I'm married. I totally renovated the house. And then I start putting in my gardens. I had terraced lands landscaped lawns. I had a sunken garden that was in all the architectural digest. It was two feet below the surface of the land. I had a secret garden and I had a victory garden during the war. People would come from all over to see my victory garden. You know, the Weir sisters, we were conservationists, preservationists, we were artists, we were farmers, we were gardeners, but we were so patriotic. During the war, we worked for the Relief League in New York City. We were trained in a number of American Red Cross courses so that we could help surgical teams, nursing teams, ambulance teams, and so on. And later, Dorothy Andrews, who worked with us, she was also a person who learned Morse code so that she could work with telegraphing during the war. We were patriotic, but we were also concerned 
we could not lose the land. We had nobody to turn it over to. The developers wanted the land. The towns wanted the tax base. The neighbors said, oh no, this is gonna ruin the neighborhood. If we put a park here, a historic site, there will be buses, there will be campers, there will be cars. Oh my goodness, what's going to happen to our beautiful neighborhood if it becomes a historic site? We had so many battles to fight, but we were going to battle them. So I was the first one that came up with an idea. And my idea was, we're going to start citizens to preserve We Are Fond. We talked to every art group, art history group, every preservationist group, all of the park groups, the legislators. Then we started what we called a historic trust for We Are Farm, and we became one of the 10 most endangered places in Connecticut that had tremendous value. We were making inroads, but before we got to be a national park, we all passed on. That was so unfortunate, but we had set a foundation. We had set a structure that was going to work. Oh, we were so fortunate. Doris Andrews had a small piece of property on our farm. She was an artist. She loved, and her husband Sperry loved this farm as much as we did. This woman gave up her artwork for 10 years to make our dream come true. Her son Barry said, I don't remember a time. My mother wasn't on the phone, having meetings, speaking to groups, talking to legislators, networking, doing everything she could to make Weir Farm into a national park. Her work paid off. In 1990, 30 years ago, Joel Lieberman worked with Doris and they penned the legislation to change the park. Make it into a reality. It was signed by George H. Bush. Hooray! This had happened. The developers did not take over our land. Almost 200 years ago, there were four women who fought endlessly to preserve Mount Vernon. Who would think you would have to fight to preserve Mount Vernon? But you have to fight for everything in life, it seems. And women have to fight even harder. If there were a group of men who wanted to change Weir Farm, it probably would have happened sooner. But it took the women never giving up to make this happen. And just this year, in 2020, something so special happened. Weir Farm National Historic Site is now Weir Farm Historic Park. This is a big deal. This one word, a site is small. A park is big. People began to realize that Weir Farm, 60 acres, 16 restored buildings, talking about early farm life the ponds, the nature walks, the stone walls, the art colonies, the history of the buildings, it's all there. It deserved to be a national park. Also in 220, Connecticut decided to mint a new coin, a new quarter. 
And what is on the face of this quarter? A picture of Weir Farm. The Weir Farm big house with an artist standing in front painting a picture of it. Yes, we have come full circle. The dream has been realized. So I hope if you have never been to Weir Farm, you come. You will have such an experience. There are so many things to do. There are hundreds of programs for the handicapped, the senior sitters, the ranger program for the young. There is constant activity at Weir Farm. But when you do come and you're walking on the trails or at the pond or taking a course, think of these four women. Think of Caroline and Dorothy and me, Cora and Doris, and how we had to fight to make this beautiful spot a reality. Thank you so much for listening to the women of Ridgefield that were remarkable and how they were all considered change agents way ahead of their time. Thank you.